So the poem that I annotated and wrote a paper about was Berry Bush by Robert Pinsky. The winter they abandoned Long Point Village, a dozen two-room houses of pine frames clad, with cedar faded to silver and not much whiter or larger, the one-room church. They hauled it all down to the docks on sledges, and at high tide, boats towed the houses as hulks across the harbor and set them on the streets of Provincetown. Today, they're identified by blue tile plaques, forgotten the fruitless village in broken holes, transported by a mad Yankee frugality, sweating resolve that pickled the sea black timbers. The loathsome part of American Zen for me is in the parable of the raft. A traveler hacks it from driftwood, tugged from the very current that wedged it in to the mud, and lashes it with bitter roots he stripped between his teeth. And after the raft has carried him across the torrent in his path, the teacher says, Traveler doesn't lift the raft on his back and lug it with him on his journey. Oh no, he leaves it there behind him, doesn't he? There must be something spoiled in the translation. Surely those old original warriors and ruling class officials and Shinto saints knew a forgetting heavier than that. The timbers plunged in oblivion, hardened by salt, black, obdurate, throne-shaped clump of ancient cane spikes at the raspberry's thickest heart. The immigrant vow not to carry humiliations of the old country to the new, still infusing the segmented sweet berry illegible ingested seed scribbled of reg allegiance take raked along your wrist under all the dead thorns sharper than the green okay so at first it may seem like the theme is to let go of the past but the last stanza makes it clear that the theme is to hold on to the past because of the shinto saints and how they're related to the past um the immigrant eating the berry from the old country also helps us see that the theme is to hold on to the past because um, the berry kind of symbolizes a part of his old country and how he still has it with him. And also in line 22, it says there must be something spoiled in the translation. That kind of hints that the theme might be the opposite of what, what it seems in the first two stanzas. Okay, so for the title, Berry Bush, I think it reflects the past and the future, which I didn't write there, but that's what I was going to write. It kind of reflects what, um, what the past is and what the future could be if you just hold on to what you have and just don't let it get away from you. Um, the winter they abandoned Long Point Village, I was wondering why they might have left. Maybe they caused a problem that made them have to leave. Um, and it did seem like a small town because it says, or larger, the one, not much whiter or larger, the one, the one church. And they hauled it all down to the docks on sledges. That kind of infers that it's a small town too. Okay, so there was alliteration in Forgotten the Fruitless Village, and that just kind of um, makes the reader think deeper about what that could mean, which I um, wrote about later in my paper. Um, the Parable of the Raft, that's also um, wrote about in my paper, and basically he worked on the raft for such a long time and he used it so much, but then he just left it behind. Okay, when they said Shinto Saints in line 24, um, I looked that up, and the Shinto Saints kind of are people that they worship the past and they don't like to forget. So it kind of contradicts what it's saying in line 25 when it says they knew a forgetting heavier than that. So they really didn't forget. And then in line 33, it says, Under all, the dead thorns sharper than the green. Okay, the dead thorns, they basically symbolize the past. And sharper means more impactful. And then the green symbolizes the present. So it's saying that the past is more impactful than the present because it can help you like fix your mistakes and like not make the same ones again. 
Okay, for my introduction, I had the hook. I wrote a short story about the people finding a lake. They were fishing at it, and eventually they left it because they overfished. Um, I included the title of the poem and the author. I didn't have a publication date because I couldn't find one, but then I also had my thesis. Okay, and then in my first body paragraph, I explained the village and the raft, and I gave the theme to hold on to the past, and I explained why it's not to forget about the past and leave it behind. And then I also explained the Shinto saints and how their inclusion in the paper kind of added to the effect of the theme. In my second body paragraph, I talked about literary devices, um, and then in, in line 9, it said, Forgotten the Fruitless Village. That was the alliteration that was used for emphasis. Um, it was used for emphasis so the reader can see that, the, that fruitless means not life-sustaining, and that kind of implies that they did end up causing a problem that made them leave. Um, I also included personification when it said they knew of forgetting heavier than that. It was put there to prove a point that they didn't forget because Shinto saints did contradict the claim that they forgot. In my third body paragraph that talked about symbolism and I talked about Long Point Village and the raft and how they symbolize like the mistakes people made and the forgotten memories. And then it says, under all, the dead thorns sharper than the green. I included that because the dead thorns reflect the past. Sharper means impactful, and the green represents the present. And then I also included the title as one of my symbols, because it symbolizes kind of the past and the future. If a person takes care of what they have and they don't take advantage of the situation, the berry bush could easily become, um, like, bigger and better. But if it's, like, taken advantage of, they probably, I don't know, they could possibly ruin their chances. Okay, and then in my conclusion... It's, pretty, it's basically a full circle ending because I related it back to the hook and explained that the people that were fishing at the lake should probably learn from their mistakes and move after they move to a new lake and they should like maybe let the fish like stay there for a while. I restated the thesis and the main points and then I ended with a strong conclusion sentence. And then last, I did my work cited, which is obviously pretty short, so that's why it doesn't have hanging indents, but that is my poem.